What up, what up? What the hell month is it? March 5th, 2013. It's been a while since I've done a show, actually. Well, let's get on with it. Let's see here. Let's get into the news. Let's see. I guess I should start with Fox News. It ain't over. Ah, hell no. Hell no. The biggest widespread storm of the winter is expected to dump at least 8 inches of snow throughout parts of the Midwest, including up to 10 inches in Chicago, where airlines have already canceled nearly a thousand freaking flights. I don't believe it. This is bullshit. This better not hit us. I'm going to have to check the weather channel now. Anyways, this is uh, Fox News. Hundreds of flights canceled as widespread winter storm could dump 10 inches on Chicago Midwest. I hope it don't hit us. Mother Nature apparently saved the best, or at least the biggest, for last. Son, I'm already pissed. I'm already pissed, and they had to say that. Chicago was hit Tuesday by a storm expected to dump as much as 10 inches of snow in the area before the end of the day. The most since the 2011 blizzard and it's more than 20 inches of snow. This will be the biggest widespread, sto widespread storm of the winter, National Weather Service meteorologist Amy Seeley said. The forecast was for 8 to 10 inches throughout northeastern Illinois and northwest Indiana, a far cry from last March, which saw less than a half inch of snow and was the warmest one on record in Illinois. Sorry guys, I gotta break off. I'm gonna go to the weather channel. I know you're just thrilled about that. Oh shit. Oh shit. Winter Storm Saturn. Hopefully, hopefully you listeners to Word of the Wise know what that means. Okay. Nice name. Who's naming this shit? We got Q. Rocky. Now we have Saturn. Alright. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's put it in the old zip code. When is this supposed to happen? Winter Storm Saturn. Winter Storm Saturn. It's just like partly cloudy and wind for that point. Sunny? <laughs> Maybe I'm not going to get it. Five day. Let's look at the five day. Uh, yeah. Never mind. I don't think it's going to hit us, but I'm sure it probably freaking will. Somehow. Anyways, let's see here. Let's get out of the snow talk. I'm already done with it. Let's see, CNN. I wish there wasn't such shitty articles on CNN. Oh, leadership change in China. Three challenges for new leaders. This is by Hillary Whiteman, CNN. Hong Kong, four months after hushed deal broking, produced a new leadership lineup for China. Now, if you've been listening, you'll remember when that happened. Xi Jinping is set to normally take charge of the country he'll rule for the next 10 years. Xi, along with new premier Li Keqiang, has inherited a supercharged economy that's created vast riches for some, a growing middle class, and many poor migrant workers who are becoming increasingly frustrated with their lot in life. But the deepening wealth divide isn't the only challenge facing the country's population of 1.3 billion people. In November, as China was convening its 18th National Communist Party Congress, CNN asked a number of China experts to define what they believe to be the country's most pressing challenges. We revisited their thoughts four months on as delegates attended the 12th National People's Congress in Beijing. Closing the wealth gap. Too many men. <laughs> I'm going to read this one in depth. 
Faced with a surging population, China attempted to put the brakes on procreation in the late 70s by implementing a controversial policy limiting couples in some areas to just one child. Since then, a cultural bias towards male children has led to a skewed child sex ratio where millions of men, or bare branches, face an uncertain future due to the lack of potential female partners. Come on, guys. Come on now. You know there's something wrong with, with any male leader that says... <laughs> anyway, securing China's food, water, and air. Four major, I'm going to read this, there's a graph here, I'm going to read it, the uh, caption to it. Four major Chinese provinces are at extreme risk of water shortages. So, that ain't good. Well, you know they're making all this damn money, you'd think they'd be able to import some bottled freaking water. But... As anybody knows, shipping bottled water is actually a little expensive. Hell, I think it costs you at least twenty dollars to ship it. You know, UPS. Anyways, All right, I'm gonna change this song. This is gonna be a little much for me to handle. Yeah, that's interesting. Old, old China. Let's go to the Drudge Report. Stocks on a high. This is from Bloomberg. The Dow Industrial Average rose to its highest level ever. Racing losses from the financial crisis after a four-year rally fueled by the fastest growth profit in the, since the 90s and monetary stimulus from the Federal Reserve. Almost $10 trillion has been restored to U.S. equities as retailers, banks, and manufacturers led the recovery from the worst bear market since the 30s. It took the Dow less than 65 months to rise above its previous high set on October 9, 2007. Psychologically, it may give a sense that we have recovered a tremendous amount from the depths of the crisis. Wasif Latif, the San Antonio-based Vice President of Equity Investments at UCAA Investments, said by telephone, his firm oversees $54 billion. On the other hand, it could create a sense of nervousness that we reached an all-time high. So how much is more is there to go? So yeah, apparently the stock market's doing all good and shit, but you know... Uh, Hopefully they're also studiers in history <laughs> and know that, you know, anytime it shoots up like that, you know what I mean? What goes up must come down. Anyways, let's see what else. War drums, uh-oh. John Kerry, this is from ABC News. John Kerry concede, I, concedes Iran is moving closer to possessing a nuclear weapon. For some reason, I'm getting a commercial. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to turn that off for a minute. At the end of his first overseas trip as Secretary of State, John Kerry acknowledged that despite the continued diplomacy and tough sanctions being leveled against Iran, the regime continues to get closer to possessing a nuclear weapon. Yeah, they're not going to let up on this one. You know... I mean, shit. We're going to end up in the same damn situation we were in with Iraq, which would be, you know, I mean, hell. I don't know. I don't know. Lines have been drawn before and they've been passed, Gary said. That's why the president has been so definitive this time. This is a very challenging moment with great risks and stakes for everybody because the region will be far less stable and far more threatened if Iran were to have a nuclear weapon. Kerry sat down with ABC News' Martha Raddatz in Qatar as his first overseas trip as President Obama's Secretary of State wound down. Kerry said the threat extends beyond the possibility that Iran could actually use the weapon on its enemies, specifically Israel. Iran simply having a nuclear weapon would spur a nuclear arms race in the region and could be used to support terrorist groups like Hezbollah, he said. The secretary warned that despite last week's negotiations in Almaty between the United States, its allies, and Iran, which he called useful, time for Iran to cooperate is running out. 
if they keep pushing the limits and not coming with a serious set of proposals or prepared to actually resolve this, obviously the risks get higher and confrontation becomes more possible, he said. On Syria, the other major focus of this trip, Kerry reiterated that the status quo in the conflict-ridden country is not acceptable. With more than 70,000 people killed over the last two years and recent reports of President Assad al-Bashir using Scud missiles to attack civilian areas, the Secretary acknowledged that America must do more. At, fr as a, at a Friends of Syria meeting in Rome last week, Kerry announced the United States would give an ad additional $60 million in non-lethal aid to Syria's political opposition. Yep, here we go. Where do you think that damn money's going to go? The money will be used for communications equipment, training advocates, and local governing councils, and to help the opposition deliver services and food to Syrians living in opposition-held areas. But Kerry also announced that for the first time, the United States will be providing non-lethal aid to Syria's military opposition, too. For now, the help will consist of food and medical supplies, but ABC News learned last week that the aid could eventually include body armor, military training, and even tanks. So now, <laughs> so now, not only are we funding uh, the opposition, we're we're funding the other side of the war as well. Like, what the hell is going on there? Do we want someone to win or what? I know it sounds like the nice thing to do, but you know, a lot of that, you know, you can trade anything for anything else in that part of the world. You know what I mean? You could trade someone freaking a steak dinner or some shit for a rifle, I'm sure. So, you know. God, that's crazy. That's nuts. The world's freaking outrageous at this point. Uh, let's see. Netanyahu on this Iran closer to nuclear deadline thing. This is from France24.com, AFP. Netanyahu, Iran closer to nuclear red line. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Monday that diplomacy has so far failed to deter Iran from pursuing its nuclear program, warning it was getting closer to crossing a crucial red line. <laughs> I wish I could find this picture for you guys. And this is freaking... Dude, this is this is crazy. You really need to find this picture online of Benjamin Netanyahu pointing to this red line of a bomb with a fuse, and he's pointing to it. It's total, like I don't know. <laughs> you just gotta see it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And you know who knows? This could all be all be truth. And but you know. Shit's gonna play out how it plays out, and you know it's too bad that people wouldn't just form their opinions into solutions that would correlate with that. But that is the world we live in. Let's see. Let's go to rinse.com. Let's see. DARPA aims for eyes in the sky at sea. From the sea. This is about from spacewar.com. <laughs> I don't know. Staff Riders, Washington, D.C. Effective 21st century warfare requires the ability to conduct airborne intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance and strike mobile targets anywhere around the clock. Current technologies, however, have their limitations. Helicopters are relatively limited in the distance and flight time. Fixed-wing manned and unmanned aircraft can fly farther and longer but require either aircraft carriers or large fixed land bases with runways often longer than a mile. Moreover, establishing these bases or deploying carriers requires substantial financial, diplomatic, and security commitments that are inc incompatible with rapid response. To help overcome these challenges and expand DoD op options, DARPA has launched the Tactically Exploited Reconnaissance Node Program, or TURN. 
seeking to combine the strengths of both land and sea-based approaches to supporting airborne assets, turn envisions using smaller ships as mobile launch and recovery sites for medium-altitude, long-endurance, male, fixed, unmanned aircraft. Named after the family of seabirds known for flight endurance, many species migrate thousands of miles each year. Turn aims to make it much easier, quicker, and less expensive for DOD to deploy ISR and strike capabilities almost anywhere in the world. It's like having a falcon return to the arm of any person equipped to receive it instead of to the same static perch every time. It's kind of, I mean, it's scary, but it's kind of interesting. God, can you imagine in 20 years the state of warfare if, if, if we haven't destroyed each other already? It'd be ridiculous. It's really going to be something like Terminator, I think. Because at a certain point, you know what I mean? That's that's the ultimate goal, you know, in the military is to protect your own... No, I mean, I would say as a standard. Protect your own... Your You know, you don't want yourself getting overtaken by the enemy. You know, at a certain point, yeah, you know, human beings will probably be taken completely out of it. And it's going to be, you know, freaking weird is what it's going to be. Can you imagine that? Like, you're at a, you're at a grocery store. Eh, screw it. I'm going to take a candy bar. And all of a sudden, there's like a, a machine out there waiting for you and, you know, going to take you out. Freaking weird. Freaking weird is what it is. Alright. Where am I here? I don't think I need to do any more news. I could just ramble on about something. Let's see here. Let me get a stretch out. Ah. <sighs> Okay. Let's see here. Well, I'm going to be working on a show today. I'm going to try to get it out by the time I go to work, at least. At least the recording aspect. Uh, Babylonian Magic and Religion. And I suggest it'll be a part of the mystery series and Word to the Wise, and I suggest listening to it. I think it'll be pretty good. At least pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know. What should we talk about today? I'm going to talk about... Okay, I saw a movie this weekend. I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to watch more. I like supernatural thrillers. You know, classic. I don't know if you... I guess it'd be psych or uh, supernatural horror. I don't know, there's just something about some movies like that that, like, I don't know. They just... And like I said last time I did the little movie review, uh, it's crappy because <laughs> I always have the whole thing figured out in, like, the first ten minutes. And, you know, that's just, I guess, because I read about shit like that on a consecutive basis all the time. And, I don't know, but... Anyways, the movie was sinister. And it's actually pretty good. It's got uh, Ethan Hawke, I think his name is. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Some of you are thinking, oh, he said fucking Ethan Hawke, most famous actor of all time. <clears throat> but anyways, he moves into this house and he's a writer. And uh, he's like a true crime writer. He moves into this house and he finds these videotapes. And you know, it's some, it's the house of some gruesome murder, and I don't want to give too much away, but, uh, I really, I really liked it. It was pretty good. Uh, I don't know, I just, there's just shit in there that I can't believe he did. Like, <laughs> there's a part in there where he, he's watching these old, like, reel-to-reel tapes, and, uh, eventually he finds this slide that has like you know the boogeyman the ghost whatever in it and it's all creepy looking and it cracked me up because he's the the tape started burn to burn off because he left it on that scene too long in the reel the reel 
and he wasn't recording it with like a video tape recorder and I I kind of lost it I was like what the fuck Are you kidding me dude that's ghost hunting 101 and uh, I don't know other than the few facts that some of the, I wish they would just keep the monster like real far in the background all the time and never let you get to see it because every time you end up seeing like the main bad guy or whatever in a horror movie it always looks fucking silly and this one actually looked pretty cool but still like, you know. But anyways, there was a concept in that movie that actually I thought was interesting they included in there. Because it mirrors something that I found in my research. And uh, what it is, is that one of the elements of the, uh, of the, uh, I guess the uh, mode of operation of the what did they call him? Bagul? That guy's name's Bagul. He's like a Babylonian demon, whatever. And, uh... Like... Basically, he lives in these images. In the mythology. And then in the modern day version of it, you know, where the story's taking place. He hides in, like, these videotapes that this killer has taken. And, like, you'll see, like, him in the background and shit. And what it is is that once you see that image, it's like a portal for him to enter your life, whatever. And, uh... Anyways, I discovered something similar to that. In the ghost hunting field with electronic voice phenomena. Now, I had... There was a point in time where I was getting a lot of darker shit. And, uh... You know, this, this is probably just theory. I don't know if I can really prove it. But, uh... It always seemed... When I had these particular recordings, that when I play them to people that were real in, you know, they were into the paranormal and stuff like that, that they would start experiencing some sort of activity in their home. I found it interesting that that movie kind of paralleled that idea. I hope you can hear me over this weird noise that's coming out. Here, this will fit a little bit better uh but yeah yeah this person had been listening to these EVPs cause I, there was a time period where I got like two or three ones one time and they were just fucking they were pretty intense and uh I would let people listen to them and uh yeah everybody everybody claimed that they had like some sort of nightmare that night and all this shit or some sort of event None of it was real intense, you know, not like the devil didn't come out of the freaking ground or whatever. But, yeah, they definitely left impressions on people. To a point where they believed, you know, some sort of event was transpiring because of these EVPs. And, yeah, and I ended up getting rid of them, honestly. Because, I mean, you know, at that point in time I was a little bit more into it and the thought that just having these things around and letting people listening to them could cause activity and you know you know other people live with me (laughs) I don't know if I should subject them to some sort of you know demonic torture because I wanted to you know get a rush when I listen to it or some shit but yeah I mean that's one area of ghost hunting and shit that I was fairly successful on and you know it it actually as time went on I I got less and less EVPs which is sort of reverse of how things supposedly work but um yeah when I first got into it and taking electronic voice phenomena and making recordings and stuff dude I was highly successful with it some very strange shit has come out of that tape recorder and that that is a fact and one of these days, I'm going to get on my uh, mom's computer, because a, a lot of that stuff saved on there, because, you know, that was the only computer in the house at that point in time. So, you know, I, like, took that sucker over. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting, dude, for real, like, 
it's sort of dangerous and I actually don't suggest people do ghost hunting unless they really understand what the hell they're doing you never know you know what I mean well, what are you going to do if something actually happens and that always kills me about people sometimes but like just put that, yourself in that situation let's say you did go and you did encounter something you know everybody knows you know ghosts can follow you spiritual entities essences whatever you want to call it they can follow you I've experienced that before and uh, you know unless you really know what the hell you're doing and I wouldn't even suggest messing with it to be quite honest with you you could probably cause some problems for yourself honestly but um, I don't know guys it was a good movie I also went to a chili cook-off and the only thing I can talk to you about concerning the chili cook-off because it was quite literally burned into my brain and body is this damn ghost pepper ghost pepper chili or some shit god man it was it was bad and what was crazy about it is I could kind of withstand the hotness in my mouth but the hotness in my stomach and <laughs> my body like rejecting it I had more spit coming out of my mouth freaking tears coming out of my eyes sweating I tell you what I think I felt that chili in my stomach for at least another hour or two hours maybe it almost ruined the whole thing for me to be quite honest because then I mean I was trying chill and I'm like uh, <laughs> no matter what I eat it just gets worse but, um, yeah, and not to be crude, but you can imagine what it was like coming out. But not really, because the mystery of the ghost chili, I've come to understand, is that I, don't, I didn't feel anything when it came out, which is weird in itself. Or maybe it's just stuck in there and hasn't come out yet. Anyways, now I'm going to end the show on that note. Uh, I hope no one gets this far. Have a good day.